continuing on with the install on this K36 number 480 we've got a Grantline clear um, or frosted lampshade put in there with an 0603 lead and I've got magnet wires that I've soldered onto it there so what we're doing is adding a little piece of heat shrink tube down there just to protect the wires and I've got another little piece of heat shrink there that's going to go over a, uh, a 3k resistor and with the decoder in the front the wire loom is being run back and I'm just using pieces of uh, heat shrink tubing over you can see where I've actually joined the wires to make them longer from the decoder and um, protected each one of course with uh, heat shrink tubing so there's no shorting so what we do with that we can uh, super glue those um, pieces of conduit heat shrink conduit into the loco so that they're away from the mo moving parts along the side of the loco and just keeping things nice and neat and we put the resistor on we're not using the uh, cam wire which is the tan wire because the uh, wows have got a great well, absolutely perfect uh, chuff rate that you can set from audio assist so I just put a tiny piece of, uh, of heat shrink over the end of that so that the wire doesn't come out and touch anything there's no metal part coming out okay the uh, back end we're starting with is the bell I've got the bell moving there now I've reworked it, I've cut the um, bell wire off that was there, I've disconnected it, I've got to put a new one on, I'll make a new one of those, we've got to get that bell to swing, just get it right, it's a little bit tight at the moment so I'll just work on that, but we've got the motor ready to go, so I've just got a little motor there, I've mounted that, I've taken the cab roof off there so the crank wheel itself which is going to have this track spike in it and the wire going off to the bell that's going to fit up inside in here for the bell rope which is uh, going to go onto the uh, motor I'll make a loop out of uh, Titchy Trains 8 South Fossil Bronze wire I can chemically blacken this I use a lot of the Titchy Trains wire it's uh, excellent stuff so what I've done with that wire is I've made a little little uh, right angle then I've made a short loop and then I've made a long loop and then I've come out and what I do I'll just solder that bit there and I'll clean that up because it's nice and smooth through there uh, so that the track spike can uh, rotate and the reason that I've made this one's a little bit short if you look at that there's a center line there and that one's wider that's going to be up near the roof of the cabin as it's turning going in and out as the crank pins moving this in and out I don't want that uh, fouling up on the roof so the shorter one goes up onto the roof and I'll drill the hole in the um, in the end of the uh, crank wheel there now so we'll put all that together and uh, put the uh, cabin back on you can now see why I've made that oval at the end because that's going to be hitting the roof as it does it's not going to be upsetting the, the forward and reverse movement and there's no whipping in that uh, rope wire rope okay little voltage regulator and um, a diode and a resistor in this case I'm using a 36 ohm resistor with the motor and I'm on the green function wire which is uh, on the adjust so you've got the voltage in is coming in the blue wire coming in through the resistor into the voltage regulator on the left hand side here which is the voltage in the voltage out is the center one which is going the red one going off to the motor and the diode is just a protector in there and we don't have any flashbacks because the motor can spin and become a generator 
So that's just it. Three components make up this, and I have not done any programming. There you go. That'll be the bell moving. Ding, 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 ding. So uh, we can pick that up now. I've got to, of course, uh, get dual mode. So if I move that over, we'll stop it. F1, green wire. And we want to start it again. So that's it. And then when I go out. Sound mode active. Now. That's pretty close as it is. That's not a bad uh, in sync. Now there's the motor in and you really don't see that at the back and the bell and if we go out sound mode active now we got that now we've got to put it into dual mode uh, dual mode means uh, going into the WOW programming guide, function button control, and then select enable functions in dual mode, and we put in the CVs, 201, 202, 203, and 204. That's what I've done, going into the web and onto the TCS site, I put uh, those uh, four CVs in. Now I've got F1 on sound and light mode together, that's dual mode. Press F1. We get the sound and the bell. Now press F1 again. And it's nice the way that bell fades out. There you go. Here we go again. Very easy to do. There's, um, there's the circuit, so I'm testing it just before I put it in. Everything I do, I test. I don't go worrying about putting it all together first and then finding out there's a problem. Just as I test as I go, and I uh, don't get any mistakes. And while I'm at, uh, at this, the tender has got a, um, a light on the back of it, down the back here. So I've only got one lead there. Now that one lead is going to be the yellow. I'm going to use the power from the um, from the track going into the body of the uh, tender to be the positive uh, blue positive common. I don't need to run a blue wire to the tender to get the lead to work. The uh, next part, part six, will be uh, finishing it up, putting the uh, firebox flicker and uh, putting the uh, loco onto the track.